this one here is uh, is the cubic one is integrable. When the uh, ratio is uh, coefficients are correct, it's integrable. Uh, and when the fifth order one is the only one left, and it turns out that we can do all that because Kodama introduced a normal form transformation, Yuji Kodama, in, uh, which has three free uh, constants in it. And you can choose to eliminate, say, those two terms and choose the ratio for those two terms with those free constant transformations. You transform then to a very the near identity transformation. So it's possible then to choose any ratio you want here uh, as a free parameter. So a certain Kodama transformation will eliminate the cubic one and the fifth order one and produce uh, this one here. Okay, this is, we call this the B equation. It has, you know, it, all it this is a regular this this equation turns out to have uh it's sensible to say this has solutions at this order as long as b is not equal to minus one when b is equal to minus one then that at asymptotically what happens is nonlinear that cancels the nonlinearity but as b becomes more negative starting from plus one going to minus one and then you know and then uh, be more negative than minus one, then what happens is because the nonlinearity vanishes at b equals minus one, the waves start going to the left uh, when b is less than minus one. Okay, so uh, the thing which is coming out of this Kodama transformation is this Helmholtz operator for the relationship between m and u in the equation. Uh, and where and uh, the Green's function for the Helmholtz operator is this exponential e to the minus absolute value of x with uh, with alpha. Okay, so if we we can in, we can uh, rearrange into a pressure form or you know a non a non local form uh, with the uh, with this Green's function uh, as a convolution. Uh, on this quadratic term in terms of for any b we can write it this way okay any b now remember is not equal to minus one is allowed and for b greater than one it turns out you produce pecan solutions uh and this is this is the ansatz for the solution that m uh is a function of x and t this this is a, si a singular solution uh, that has an amplitude depending on time and the position Q. And this is a, a map from a phase space uh, in P's and Q's. And this, this is the map which uh, Jerry Morrison and I realized was a, was a momentum map. I was giving a talk about this map uh, when, you know, in, in where even when it was for higher dimensions, and I was saying, well, it, it you know, it's a map from from the phase space to the singular solution, uh, but I'm not claiming it's a momentum map. Uh, and Jerry was in the back of the room. He said, "Not so fast. That could be a momentum map." This was a lecture in mid morning, and by after lunch, it was a momentum map. So, if we substitute. Uh, this map uh, for u and m into uh, the B equation, uh, we get this relationship here. So you, if you see it's a canonically Hamiltonian equation for the case that B is equal to two. So this explains why B equals two uh, is an interesting choice. Okay, but what happens is that Every for every b greater than one, you get pecans, uh, or in this case, for that for that Green's function, a method, and they travel to the right. For b between one and minus one, uh, you have ramps and cliffs. So b is some kind of uh, bifurcation parameter, 
and you like to know you, you know understand minus one you can't have minus one you know it'll it won't go to the right anymore okay but, but what about one right because when b equals one uh well you see dpdt is zero so that's obviously strange um uh, but there, there's more to it. it there, we'll see more to it about this uh, B greater than one. And when B is less than minus one, like I said, uh, the waves go to the left, okay? And they string out into a train, but most importantly, they, say, they string out into a train which stops. It's just, they all come to a halt. Uh, and when you uh, ask what's the that shape, uh, uh, turns out that it's a set squared. It goes to asymptotically to a, a fixed wave, uh, which is set squared uh, potential. So you can start out with a pecan, right, as your initial condition, uh, and and have begin with uh, uh, b equals zero, right, in the middle of the ramps and cliffs, and it. The pecan immediately drops down into being a ramp and cliff. And then after 2,500 or 7,500 7, steps, 2,500 steps, if you now just change for the next time step, B is minus two, it goes thump, and it starts going back to the left and goes out here and stops. Uh, these figures are made by Martin Staley, uh, you know, years ago now. Uh, so okay, so here's what we have. If we start with uh, with the pecan, it'll slump over immediately into uh, 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 ramps and cliffs. And then if you switch it at a given time step, it has no memory of what happened before. It just starts out with the new solution. Okay. So, uh, what about? Uh, Higher dimensions. What about uh, what about this evolutionary equation uh, of this form for convection and stretching in in dimensions? So this is you no know, these guys be in dimensional vectors, uh, and we will get the the, the corresponding B equation uh, is a transport equation. Now that's one of the reasons why this is such a special feature. It's you know just transporting by you this object. Which is a one form, and then a, a, a well, a, a, an exponential you know, of a volume form. Okay, and we're about to learn something more about B here. So, if here's our here's our momentum map. This is actually the momentum map that Jerry and I showed. Uh, this work for n dimensions uh, is so these these guys here with delta functions. Uh, integrated over their uh, parameters. These are embeddings, okay, so that uh, PI depends on time, but it has coordinates that are essentially Lagrangian coordinates that are being moved around. They are Lagrangian coordinates being moved around by the flow, by this transport. Okay, so this is M, and this time we call the, the Green's function G, uh, and velocity substitute uh, this solution on sats into that equation. Uh, and this is what you get an equation for Q and P in terms of Lagrangian coordinates S and T. Uh, and now you see why B equals two is important, okay? Because this thing uh, closes down and allows you to look at these. Emergent singular solutions from a confined initial condition in any number of dimensions. And the way they form in terms of M uh, is that they become singular at, in, in, at in, uh, embedded surfaces that are moving with the velocity of the, uh, of the flow, U. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for and for B equals two, these are canonically conjugate equations. So that's the other thing is that this momentum map collectivizes. You know, these are these are uh, canonically conjugate 
uh, equations whose Hamiltonian uh, is, a, is a Hamiltonian for geodesic motion with the co-metric G. Okay, so who ordered this? Uh, why? Uh, so let me let me explain. Uh, so the, when diffeomorphisms act on the cotangent bundle of embeddings, uh, they can either act on the Lagrangian coordinates or they can act on the uh, on the on the full space. If they if they act on the Lagrangian coordinates, uh, then uh, this is uh, this is what appears from the Klepsch representation. It's this is the right action momentum map. Uh, and it's the thing which appears uh, in the integrand of the Kelvin theorem, okay, for fluid dynamics, uh, and to especially for Euler's equation. And for Euler's equation, the p's and q's are uh, the kind of clutch variables that we began with in Tudor's talk earlier. And if, but if it acts by composition on the left. Then it's acting on the entire domain and the motion uh, of the of the part of points in the domain is carrying the embeddings around, and this is what uh, that momentum map is doing. Okay, so it's uh, yeah. So this you know, this this will drop down now into uh, uh, Lagrangian equations for uh, the vectors p and q. For any number that you choose, uh, for of uh, of singularities. Okay, so these two the two group actions of the diffeomorphisms on embeddings, uh, 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 Cornelia Biesman and uh, Francois Gabema showed that in fact this is also a this is also a dual pair, as like. Uh, was mentioning in his talk a minute ago. This is a, this is one of the one, the one of the first dual pairs in the diffeomorphisms. Okay, so the the statement is, and then this theorem that that singular solution that we introduced uh, for B equals two uh, defines a singular momentum map. So it's a Poisson map for B equals two. So it maps the canonical Poisson structure on the on the cotangent bundle of the embeddings to the Lie Poisson structure and vector fields in Rn. Uh, in the one, actually, there's these are one form densities. Uh, so this explains why the Rn singular solutions for B equals two have symplectic Poisson brackets. It's because the singular solution on us is an infinitesimally Equivariant momentum. Okay, so uh, the B equals two case is also an, in one D is a is a uh, a lax pair, and this is in its isospectral problem. It's a lax pair, and you it's the the compatibility condition for these two equations. So taking the the time derivative of psi x x. And two x derivatives of psi sub t, and cutting them equal, uh, gives back the b equals two equation, and it has a bi-Hamiltonian structure with two Poisson operators, uh, b two and b one, and these are compatible in the sense that the sum of them uh, is also uh, a Poisson structure. And the corresponding Hamiltonians are for H1, uh, B2 operates on H1, uh, produces with this cubic Hamiltonian. B1 operates on H2, which is the H1 norm in, in 1D. And the, the recursion operator uh, R, B1 times B2, starting with, uh, with, this, with this equation, will generate the entire hierarchy of commuting flows for the, the B equation with B equals two. And 
if you start with whatever pattern that's uh, confined in space and and even under reflection, uh, what will happen is that it will lean to the right and it'll a bump will begin to grow. It's going to be propagating with the speed equal to its height. Okay, and as soon as the bump gets higher than the initial condition, it's going to start moving away. There's this, there's a, it's leaning to the right for me, you know, but what happens is we'll, we'll see in detail later. But we'll see that something's happening to make this thing fall. And then this one's higher than what's left. The area under the curve stay, is preserved. And this guy propagates away. And leaves a, 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 a it, we, it leaves it leaves a profile that has a inflection point with negative slope. And if it has an inflection point with negative slope, then the theorem is that this solution will develop a singularity in finite time. However, it's not developing it here. It's too smart. This equation is too smart to develop a singularity just for any. Uh, you know, it, it has the kid actually has the capability to propagate away and lose its inflection points and propagate as a stable, uh, coherent structure. You can see the uh, the collisions up here. This is periodic boundary condition. The collisions where this guy is coming across and comes uh, right back out here and these these guys are very stable these when they when they collide they just transfer momentum from the taller one to the shorter one uh and then the shorter one becomes taller and moves away from it okay that's the dynamics of the p's and q's it's a collision dynamics elastic collisions for b equals two okay so what about other Green's functions. For other Green's functions, we can, let's just define a norm in terms of an operator L, okay? You know, some um, bounded even operator. Uh, and let's compute its uh, equation of, uh, its Euler-Poincaré equation using, you know, the Euler-Poincaré theorem, using that variational uh, relation that Tudor talked about, you know, for in his talk as well, uh, it produces this produces this or the Euler uh, um, Poincaré equation for the quantity L operating on U. That's M, and this is that equation with B equation with B equals two. Uh, and the initial value problem, right? Uh, then uh, will yield us a uh, uh, velocity, which has the shape of whatever we choose as the Green's function for the operator L. Okay. So I mean, the reason I want to mention this is we can now, now start looking at different shapes uh, of the pecans. They don't have to be pecans anymore. This doesn't have to be an e to the minus absolute value x anymore. It can be whatever shape you prefer to choose, which is confined and which is uh, even in the under reflection. Okay, so uh, here's here's the usual shape, the one we were just looking at before. It, starting with the Gaussian, it makes these pecans. Okay, so this is the Helmholtz operator. Uh, you can choose higher order uh, um, norms, or you can be bold. Uh, uh, okay, so this is the first one with the, this is the exponential. You can be bold and uh, just choose a, green, a Green's function, which is simply an isosceles triangle and compact, uh, you know, with, and then compact support. With that Green's function, okay, this is what will happen from the same Gaussian. It will, it will put out little triangles and the triangles will collide uh, and scatter just and you know and uh, elastically as well. You can choose uh, just the top of a parabola with a compact support between them, okay? And it'll just put out little cut off uh, parabolas. This is their interaction. 
uh, elastic again. Uh, but when you look at the head-on collision, this is where the the uh, the B equals two equation develops a uh, a verticality in finite time. It happens when the inflection point with negative slope can't get away, can't propagate away. So if the initial conditions are, uh, you know, a peak on with a positive uh, height and a peak on with a negative height, peak ons with negative height will go to the left. With positive height, that's positive velocity, they'll go to the right. And this is what it is meant by developing the singularity in finite time. But for the case B equals two, what happens is that as the verticality develops, the amplitude of the solution gets smaller. And just at the moment when it becomes vertical, uh, the amplitude is zero, okay? And then it bounces. This one becomes uh, an anti-peak on moves that way. But this one bounces out and, and moves back. Elastic collision. Oh, now, what about the other shapes? This is also interesting. Here's what happens when the isosceles triangles, uh, 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 when the isosceles triangles collide, what you see is again, verticality is forming, but also again, uh, an amplitude uh, going to zero as the collision occurs. Uh, for the parabolas, uh, then something else happens. Okay, now that now as it approaches, the linearity appears and the singularity is on the back end of the shape. Okay, this one actually does numerically, it just goes, uh, uh, it just goes off to infinity. So, this is a different type of singularity. This is a singularity that has for compact supported pulses. Uh, and as you see, you can get the verticality in either the back part of the uh, the front part where there's a jump in the derivative for the compact support. Okay, so you can do anything I said. So how about uh, a, a, a shape for a Green's function, which is compact isosceles triangle, parabola, compact uh, isosceles triangle again, then an anti one of those. And when they collide, this is all the stuff that they, they go through. Uh, and in the end, it makes a, a profile, which reminds me of New Mexico you know, with the mesas, right? Uh, but there's a lot of freedom here. Okay, so I just thought I would mention it. Uh, it, seems, it seems interesting that these solutions will uh, perfectly well propagate things with compact support. Okay, so now let's ask about, talk about how the pecans form. Okay, so in, the, in some, in numerics by uh, Tom Bindle, dual C, uh, we can watch the, uh, the pecan form. Okay. Oops. Oh, there's a problem here with that. Uh, okay. Uh, I will. Uh, just one moment. I want to show this. So uh, let me stop sharing for a second. Um, How do we stop sharing? Oh, stop sharing. Okay, I'm going to get. Um, Got to get the source file. Um,
Ah, okay. I'll be back in a second. Can you copy the YouTube link into a browser and then share that? Yeah, I wanted to, but um, I, I, I could try to it. open it from the PDF and that's complaining, but maybe a browser would be nicer. Oh, uh, you okay? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I, I'll, so I'll share, right? Okay, so I go to uh, Zoom. Let's see if we can get that uh, share. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, and go to the. So I, I couldn't. Okay. What I'm trying to do, yeah. So I, I, it's um, I've got, a, I've got a problem with this thing. It won't, it won't open. So I'm going to, uh, come back. To, because I, I have to give you a verbal description and then, uh back to the if you want to email us the pdf we might be able to get it to work directly um all right what i've been trying to do uh is um is I'm trying. I was trying to open this thing, and now, now, I, now I'm I'm too far away from it. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back. Uh, you can, um, you if you want to, you can write down the the. Um, so I'm sharing now, right? Am I sharing? Yeah. I'm not sharing. Yeah, this is sharing. Uh, Marcel is suggesting if you try opening this file with preview instead of Adobe, uh, it might be friendlier to allowing links. Yes, I'm both yeah. true. Yeah, it's defaulting into Adobe. No, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna try again. So uh, either right-click on it or just. Yeah, I know how to do it. Okay. okay. You got to see this. Yep. All right. Good. It's working. Okay. So this is starting from a Gaussian. Okay. Uh, as you move forward, it gets steeper. Uh, it's leaning to the right now. Okay. But what you need to look at uh, is that. Uh, is watch the inflection points, okay? So there's an inflection point about here, okay? And as you uh, go forward with it, the inflection point climbs rapidly, okay? Now it's around here someplace, okay? And a little bit later, it's very high. And then right, it, right at the very tippy tip, when the, there's one on each side, and as it comes to the top, as they meet, the the uh, the jump in the derivative forms, 
okay and thereafter uh this part is the part that's moving away okay from the region and as it moves away it develops uh another inflection point and uh, there's a flow as this one moves away there's a flow into it okay and because the area is conserved and as it moves away it moves away as a pecan that's how they form they have inflect you start out with inflection points with positive slope and negative slope and the inflection points climb up to the top and as they climb the peak rises and when they collide, then comes the singularity. How about that? Okay, and so here's how the collision looks. Um, and some, so here's how I got to. As the collision occurs, it's a singularity kind of then, uh, right, a little bit too fast. So see how it drops? Okay, just as the verticality is forming, this that's the last of, of the uh, resolution of the problem. Okay, so now you see how this is working. This, this is a great problem for analysis. It's still, it's still open. There have been a thousand papers written about the blow up of this equation, but uh, the, uh, the blow up hasn't been explained in terms of the collision of two inflection points before. Okay, so now we're moving into the stochastic realm. Uh, the uh, so Tudor, I'm using a red D to represent the you know the Ito integral. Uh, these these are all integral formulas, but we write them in a in a in a stochastic differential form. Uh, this is our B two. This is our our operator for the uh one plus on bracket and this is our uh, hamilton which is a semi martingale some semi martingale is here's where we add the stratovich noise we take the variation with respect to u okay then you're going to get uh with sorry with respect to m you're going to get uh a u here and a c here Okay, and that's this is going to be our uh, this is the transport velocity for this one form density m. Uh, the then the initial value problem, uh, if for uh, drops to the pulse on uh, solutions or uh, just as a um, again, uh, a canonical. Uh, stochastic now set of uh, ordinary differential equations. Okay, so uh, the question is, can pecans emerge from noise? Okay, so this, this I think, is uh, really fun. Okay, because this one here, uh, oh, these are just, this is the, I'm not going to have time to be able to show this. Uh, this is the stochastic, what a stochastic pecan looks like, uh, but I'm going to keep. I want to finish on time. Um, I don't know. I have to go back here. Uh, Yeah, the stochastic excitation of pecans. 
Okay, so I have to tell you a little bit about the C's here. So we'll put in, in this, these, these are the amplitudes that depend on X and you put in uh, over the domain, you have three little sine waves, okay, for the amplitude uh, of the noise. Then uh, if we watch the excitation of the peak on, Okay, so maybe I'll do it this way. Um, so as the peak on begins, you know, the, it actually sort of looks nicer if you're watching it in uh, as a stochastic problem. And so this is stochastic. This is one realization of the stochastic uh, peak on problem. Okay, so. At this point, you can say, why, wow, is that what you mean by pecan? No, it's not pecan. Okay, so, but it's trying, it's trying. So the, the, the theorem is that the pecan will emerge uh, with positive probability. We don't have an almost surely result, but in this particular run, uh, the pecan emerged. Okay. Still not the one I want, but I think that's not the one I want. Uh, still in this problem. Okay, now other norms. It turns out that this was an idea of, of Colin Cotter's idea uh, is that, yeah, is it possible to go to go beyond and actually talk about LP sort of norms, the W, W, you know, one you know, R norms uh, in which the momentum is now going to be a very nonlinear object. Okay, so it's still B equals two. But the but the momentum and relationship between the momentum and the uh, and the velocity needs to be worked out. So here's the Hamiltonian after the uh, transformation, uh, the Legendre transform, and here is uh, we pair uh, the m with v, okay, and uh, and then insert the, the singular solution, uh, and this, and so we can make this is our statement of what is the definition of a singular solution. Here it says m in terms of u uh, paired with v, uh, and now this is what the momentum map looks like uh, for this uh, different type of norm. I should point out that. Uh, uh, that M here is in W1R prime, where one over R plus one over R prime is one. So, yeah, when R is two, then th this is uh, back to the H1 norm. Uh, but when R is three or six or something, uh, then these two guys have a relationship. Okay. So the answer is yes, there are pecan solutions. And yes, when they collide, uh, they um, uh, scatter elastically. Okay, this is this getting this thing to run uh, is a, was a, a um, 
uh, root of force in numerics. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, and the the when the the paths the the main point is that the, the pecans keep their order. Okay, uh, when they collide, and when they collide, uh, they get much closer than than they than in the case for see like here uh, than in the case for um, um, H one for B equals two with H one. Okay, so now I have some more things to show. I'm almost done, I guess, but I'm going to show you. Uh, I have what happens in higher dimensions. What about higher dimensional emergent singular solutions? So for that, uh, I'm going to uh, stop with. Uh, and um, go to show you some more figures. Okay. Um, now let's see. I think I can do this. Okay, so. So here is a pecan ridge in a plane with a uh, that falls off exponentially in both directions. That this black line below shows a uh, a plot of a, along um, in one dimension through the middle. Okay, and it drops off exponentially at the ends also with the width alpha for this for the pecan. And when you let it go, these guys are going faster than those guys. These guys are fixed points. And as it, 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 it then propagates, still as a pecan, um, still as a pecan, but it blows up like bubbles. Okay, that's the beginning. This is when, uh, let's see. Uh, the this is the when when the alpha is sigma sigma is the width of the initial condition and alpha is the width of the pecan so when the pecan and the initial condition are the same it starts out as a uh as a pecan and it preserves itself but uh and the only thing you see in is pecans of the same kind you know when the other colors are looking at uh slices through the diagonals or through the vertical. Okay, so um, let's see. Do I have to? Uh, okay, right. So here's what happens when uh, when the uh, when your initial condition uh, is, uh, when your initial condition is eight times the width of the pecan, then what happens is you get a pecan, uh, the pecan breaks up into, uh, or the initial condition breaks up into pecans. And this is what it looks like in 2D when they break up. Okay, this is what it looks like when one uh, uh, overtakes the other and, cl and collides. And you see, as this one here is hitting this one, it just cuts it like a knife through butter and joins again. And the slower one is left behind. Uh, and this con you know, this continues. Again, this is with, uh, with pecans. The initial condition is a, it's a pecan initial condition. So if not, uh, if alpha is, if, if they're, if the initial condition is twice the width of the pecan, then what you get is you get sub pecans forming. Uh, okay, so here, this one here is a pattern where this one's coming down. It's wider than this one, but and and it's going to uh, run into this one, get cut off. Uh, and so anyway, the point is that these this equation. Uh, these are the embeddings, the propagations of the embeddings I've been talking about. 
Okay, here it is uh, when you have this skew collision uh, when the initial condition is eight times the width, the width of the peak end. Peak end, uh, it breaks up into uh, uh, some uh, sequence of pecan collisions that, that uh, can become pretty complicated, but they still are identified as pecans uh, by all the slices. Okay, here is this combination where they squeeze together. Uh, and this one here is when the initial condition is the same as the pecan width. What happens is when they hit like this, there is a jet that forms, okay? And it, that jet will accelerate this guy right through. Uh, so there's a, there's a sense of curvature in the, in the speed of the propagation. Here's how it looks when, uh, here's how it looks when, the, again, the ratio is eight. Uh, you know, my my postdoc mentioned that if we turn this thing vertically, it'll look like a mushroom cloud. Uh, okay, so here's my favorite one. Uh, where this is called the star, where in the center the velocity is zero. Okay, they all because at the ends it all drives off drops off to zero. Uh, the width is the width of the peak on, and this thing. Uh, and well, each each one each one is is positive, uh, and each one feels the other one, and it's so they spin, and merge. And here's how it looks like when there are eight pecans inside of each of the initial conditions. Uh, so, yeah, this the there are. Uh, these types of singular solutions in higher dimensions. Okay, here's there. This one here is just a ridge, but this uh, of uh, moving to the moving to the that has a this is the ridge. Each one of these is moving to the right, but that one has uh, negative cur positive curvature. This has negative curvature, and it does this business of uh, pushing through the jet. Here's what it looks like in the case when. Sigma has eight pigment uh, pecans. Here's what this thing looks like in when they are embeddings that are little disks. They start out as disks uh, uh, and expand. You know, it, the, what's looking at what you're looking at is in the back. There's a projection. Uh, you know, in the direction for the back, there's a projection to the bottom, uh, and. Uh, when you cross the center line, there's a projection that's written on the on the on the back part of the cube. Okay, so this is a this is this collision of the singular solutions in uh, which are two dimension one and three dimensions. Okay, um, this one here is uh, um, just let's see. This one is a uh, uh, I think this is a sphere. This is a sphere. That's how this is a sphere. Yeah, because you can see, yeah, you can see that it's developing this, you know. Um, this is the torus. It starts out as a torus. And as it propagates, uh, and it, there's an interaction a jet again. And then the two dimensional projections look a lot like the two dimensional pecans. Okay, this is an entwined torus, and this is uh, this is where the talk ends. So, thank you very much for listening to the talk. Okay, thanks. Let's thank the speaker. Any questions? Questions here? Hello. Hi, Daryl. Uh, can you uh, set them up so they spell David? Ah, ah nice question. Uh, I wish I could. Uh, uh, I'm wondering if. 
Go ahead. I'm wondering if um. So the the solutions you have are obviously singular, and if I view the Kamasa Holm equation as the fundamental thing, then um, uh, those are weak solutions, and there are like obviously uh, other ways to continue these solutions, right? So I think maybe pecans are natural, um, but how does the geometry distinguish, say, the conservative, you know, global weak solutions of uh, an equation like Kamasa Holm? from the non-conservative ones or any others? I've always wondered that. Yeah, that's a really good question. It turns out uh, that um, if you that when you think of the uh, Lee Poisson equations as uh, a single bracket equation, okay? So it's a, you know, you're pairing, you're in a pairing between uh, uh, the dual of Lie algebra and and a, and a, uh, a Lie bracket, okay, the two variational derivatives. So, okay, in order to uh, to you know to define this Poisson bracket, uh, if you if you define a double bracket, uh, then that's a dissipative problem, uh, and uh, it turns out that if you think about what um, uh, Felix Sato did for with uh, potential, you know, with gradient flows uh, for uh, the uh, porous medium equation, you can make a double bracket version of the porous medium equation. And then what happens then is you get aggregation. I can give another talk about that sometime. You, what you get is you. Uh, if you start from some initial condition, the the motion is some kind of flow, uh, and but if you but it turns out that if you start with an initial condition that has a peak, finite time the peak will become singular, okay. And because it's a flow, as it begins to grow, it becomes singular. It will suck in other material, right, and that drops the level. Of the nearby of the of the, neighbor, the neighboring level of the, as the singularity begins to grow, but that produces other uh, uh, maxima, and every maxima uh, will grow, will become singular in finite time. But in addition, as they're growing, they're attracted to each other. They're attracted to like a center of mass problem, and they all aggregate, and in the end, there can be only one. Any other questions here? Okay, thank you very much for listening. I'm glad. Happy birthday, David. Thank you.